Welcome to the Las Vegas Phil podcast brought to you by Jump Studios, where we cover topics related to everything happening around Sin City, including the social media scene, food, and a whole lot more with some of the best, most popular accounts around the city and talk about their success in Vegas and beyond. I'm your host, Philip Zhang, aka Las Vegas Phil. Check me out on IG or TikTok and feel free to text or leave me a voicemail at 702-551-4445. On with the show. Hey everyone, I don't know what you were doing when you were 22 years old, but I certainly wasn't at the forefront of food social media making enough bank to buy my own house, car, fancy t-shirts, and all the stuff like Damien's doing now. And this for me is really interesting because it'll be a great time capsule in a few years to see where he's gone from here. Uh, Damien Ocampo has come a long way since he went door to door trying to sell social media services in a car with no air conditioning uh, a few years back. He continues to inspire me, and if I ever have a question on young people trendy things, or Bad Bunny lyrics, uh, Damien would be my go-to. <laughs> Better known as Hooked LV, he currently sports 184K on Instagram and over 871K on TikTok. His incredibly well-done edited videos coupled with that unique and unmistakable voice keeps the masses coming back for more. He's blown up a ridiculous list of businesses, and I'm happy to call him a friend. Uh, I think a lot of people have been waiting for this one, and I'd like to welcome Damien Ocampo, a.k.a. Hooked LV, to the show. Wow. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to have you. How are yeah, you, man? That was so awesome. <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, first podcast we did was back in May of 2021, which was just over a year ago, a year and a half ago. You had 250K on TikTok. Oh, shoot. And 55K on IG. Wow. I don't even know those. I don't even know the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's, it's definitely gone up since then for sure. So 15 months, 16 months, I mean, you've gone... Yeah, you've gone ham. Thank you. Yeah. I've been trying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Trying for sure. For sure. So we've talked about this in previous episodes with people like Lindsay, um, how, I mean, you just have a whole distinct way of, of doing it. And I think it just keeps people captivated. And even in a time where people like myself, where my TikTok has been trash last three months, you consistently put out excellent work and it, and it shows in the numbers, it shows in the people lining up the very next day to go to some of these places. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, uh, I mean, what, what what people have told me is that my, like, what people have told me is that how I built Hooked LV, it's uh, my audience, I don't know how to explain it. It's, uh, I feel like each account in Vegas has a specific audience, right? Like Lindsay, I would say would be more like mothers and stuff like that, uh, which is awesome. I think that's super cool. Uh, but what people have told me is that my audience is pretty broad. Every, every types of people, uh, all sorts of people, you know, come to my page and comment. And I hear that the same stuff from the, from clients too. Like, you know, we've seen people that we've never seen here before, new faces every day. Uh, so it's, it's been pretty cool how, how I've been able to build it. And I've, I don't know how I did it exactly, but you know, it's just, that's how it's coming to be. <laughs> well, the videos are great. It opens up always in like a really eye-catching way. That yeah, I try, I try to, I try to make them a little catchy at first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got to look for the hook. I was actually at the pizza festival and I uh, met up with one of your clients above the crust. They texted me. <laughs> yeah, shout out to them. Um, it was really nice meeting them. And then we got to discussing just you and how you've um, bl really blown up their business. And uh, it's, been, it's been an awesome ROI for them uh, since, you, since you linked up with them. So that's awesome. I, I'm going to go back and, and video something there. Yeah, they actually, so it's, it's above the crust pizza day. They've had, uh, they had, I think, three restaurants in total before COVID. But during COVID, they had to close down two of them. So now they only have one. And they were struggling pretty bad when, when, I, when I came in and, and helped them out. But now, now they're doing pretty well, pretty good. They tell me that people come into the store with, uh, with uh, suitcases. Yeah, they told me someone came into the store straight from the airport. Yep. They were like, oh, we got to try this. We saw this on a video. We had to come straight from the airport. We didn't even want to go to the hotel. And I thought that was pretty cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> they told me that. Hell yeah. I love when people just order by showing the phone. That's when Yeah, that's, that's, that's how you know it works. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> um, you recently changed up your icon with your face. Instead oh, yeah. Of you guys noticed that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I had to do a deep dive into it. I wanted to rebrand a little bit. Yeah, I wanted to rebrand a little bit. So I, I put my face just because... I mean, I've gotten this advice from a lot of people, and, and, I, and I know that this works, but, you know, having a face to a brand really helps it grow, and especially when it comes to, you know, making deals with other bigger brands that, you know, want to pay me to 
you know, to do a partnership or whatever, right? Because, you know, Hooked LV is really limited to just, you know, Vegas local restaurants versus Damien could be, you know, bigger. I can, you know, get a bigger audience, I feel like. So that's why I changed it. And I couldn't really find a good picture of myself. <laughs> that was a good picture. Yeah, my, my girlfriend was like, you should have put one that you're smiling. But I was like, I don't really have too many smiling pictures. So <laughs> I got to take a smiling picture soon and change that. But I, I still wanted to keep the logo. So I put it all on the on the highlights. And then same thing like on my YouTube, the banner is now the logo, Facebook, Twitter. Is, I just could still want to keep the logo kind of noticed. So it was a plan to broaden out to outside Vegas and do more non-food uh, stuff? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I think I think I kind of want to stick with Vegas for now and see what I could do with this. Mm -hmm. But I never know where it can take me, you know? I, I can't, I don't really predict it. But for now, like as far as like a plan or a goal, I, I definitely just want to keep growing in Las Vegas for now. And then, you know, but that might take me somewhere else later. Yeah, I think people who don't know, kind of look at you as a, as a seasoned veteran of the social media scene, but you're still super young. I don't even know who's younger, you or Talls. I think she's older than me by like yeah. a year. Look at that. I really don't know, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think it's like by a year or so, but yeah, I feel like I am, I am the youngest, right? <laughs> I think you might be, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone else. Jeez. Yeah, I, I started when I was like, like 19, 20, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm 23 right now. <laughs> yeah, so initially, um, you know, I was just combing through Instagram maybe five years ago, uh, four or five years ago, and your photos back when we were still posting photos really caught my eye. And I thought you just had an excellent eye for the food, um, how you set it up. And even though you weren't that big, I, it really piqued my interest into to what you were all about. You know who was my biggest inspiration for like photo editing? Paul Ryu. His what? photos are crazy. Yeah, I would study his photos. He probably doesn't know this, but I would study his photos, and sh and I still can't figure out how he does it. But uh, a lot of a lot of inspiration was was from from Paul yeah, make for the sure. Face and do the, the that's yeah, so that makes, yeah, that's yeah, no, that no, oh seriously, like because yeah, 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 back then it. photos was like the biggest thing, you know. Now it's videos. Like if you post a photo now, it's days. I mean, only for like client accounts, right? But like if a creator posts a photo, it's a little weird unless you're like a. You know, uh, yeah, it's a sponsor, really, right? really good looking guy or girl, you know, but right. yeah, we're a sponsor. But but yeah, a lot of my inspiration from like editing was was from Paul for sure. Very yeah. cool. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. Was, oh. Yeah. He had his, his photos are super crispy. Yeah. So but yeah, I, I and then I try, try to develop my own little, you know, taste in, in how I can how I should edit and stuff. But yeah, I'm, sometimes I look back, I scroll down and look at some of my vi my photos and videos, and I'm like, this is so cringy. I was like, I don't know how I could have ever posted this, <laughs> but you know, that's how we start. <laughs> totally, this is the evolution, and I'm sure if we looked at our videos two years from now, you know, yeah, how, how probably the same this thing. Would be like, oh my god, you know, we used to speed up everything. You know, it's crazy. Um, I did the same thing for TikTok because I went to go back and look at like my first so my first voiceover I ever did on TikTok. I deleted it. And then I posted it again, and I was like, okay, let me just leave it up. It was, it was so cringy hearing your own voice. Um, I don't even think I used the microphone. I think I just used, like, the iPhone, right. you know, you know, the microphone that comes with your phone. Yeah. And I heard it, and I just I ended up deleting I was like, this is so weird. Because <laughs> uh, I think it was only just me and Talls that were doing the, well, that. Well, it was her. She's, I've seen her doing voiceovers first for restaurants, and then I, um, I did it also, and... So my my first one, I deleted it, but then the second one, I, I kept it for a little bit, and it kind of did okay, and I was like, all right, fine, I'll leave it. So then I just started doing voiceovers. That's kind of how I started. Right. So the deletion mm -hmm. was just self-consciousness? Just just hearing my own voice. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I I'm not you. used to hearing my own voice. I always thought it was kind of weird, you know? Yeah. But uh, I just kept it on and post started posting every day, you know? voiceovers and it kind of worked out i guess i guess people like hearing the voice yeah well thank know. god for everyone you did I mean, yeah. yeah it's been amazing jen uh, vegas starfish mentioned that her first voiceover post that went off for like eight million she deleted it oh really eight she million yeah she couldn't uh wow that's big yeah way back in 2020 wow yeah no i i deleted my first one <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think my like first voiceover that blew up was a uh, eight ounce korean barbecue i think I don't even remember, but yeah, looking back, it's kind of funny. <laughs> right. Scroll down. I mean, I feel privileged to get more of an inside look as to what you've been up to, but I think for many people in the social media scene, you're kind of like a enigma. 
I think, like mysterious in a way. But that's the beauty of doing what we do, though, right? I mean, the freedom to do whatever you want. You don't have to hang out with everyone. You don't have to. You just do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I definitely like just doing my own thing. Honestly, I just uh, ever since I started, I've always kind of just done my own thing. Um, as far as like when it comes to going to events and stuff. It's, and there's certain restaurants, too, that I, I, I see, and I'm like, I don't know if I would ever go there as, like, myself. You know, even though there's an event, everybody's there, I was like, I don't, I don't think I would ever go there. Um, so, yeah, I just I kind of just do my own thing, I feel like. Yeah, and I think that's cool. I mean, that's the whole reason we got into this, to have some freedom, uh, to not have to say yes to everything. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, the, from going to school and working a job to doing this, I'd rather do this every day. It's It's... It's honestly a blessing. Yeah, we do have a lot of freedom to kind of choose what we want to do. Uh, and then I feel like it's the same thing for, for a lot of people in, in this industry. We kind of just got to do our own thing, you know? It's, you know, what more can you ask for than that? Totally. Um, we're about five minutes in. And so okay. the plan was you know, Damien wanted to change it up a bit. So we're yeah, going to try something new. Yeah, we're going to do something every five minutes. And apparently the first thing we're doing is a tequila shot. Yeah. All right. Um, should Nothing like some, yeah, some room temperature Fort Eliza oh, yeah. to, uh, to wash this down. We should have taken the Polaroid before this because I'm going to be fucking red. Should we, should we take a picture now? <laughs> Just take it now. <laughs> yeah, let's take a picture now. Okay. Can right we? in the middle of the show. Right in the middle of the show. <laughs> and then what else we got here? We got Whistle Pig, Buffalo Trace, some uh, Popeye's chicken nuggets. Have yeah, you ever had be, this? This should be fun. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, one, one of the best ones. How much do you want? Just a shot just a size? shot. Have you seen that video? Two shots of tequila? No. And the lady pours in, pours in a bunch. So there's this, vi there's this video that went viral. Uh, and it's a lady showing like a cocktail recipe. And she's like, two shots of tequila. But she pours in like, it looks like four or five shots. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. All right, you. All right, dude. Great having you here. All right, thank you. Bottoms up. Appreciate it. Cheers to everyone watching. <laughs> no chaser. No temperature. Straight. It's pretty good. Yeah, this I've is never good. had it. Yeah. Yeah. I could do a Super second stuff. one of those in five minutes. Yeah, five more minutes. Jeez. Do you do uh do you do the salt and the lime and all that stuff when you take a shot? Uh no, not really. Just go straight into it, right? Yeah, no, I go straight yeah. into it. Um there's certain ones that like make make me like like they're just way too strong, like alcohol, like rubber. Rub, rubbing alcohol tasting, but no, nah, typically no, I don't do a lime and salt. Yeah, sometimes I'll do a lime if it's like Cuervo. Oh, you do? Something like that. Yeah, I don't do the salt. Yeah, anymore. the Cuervo is like the cheap, cheaper one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, you're a highly coveted social media foodie now, whether it's for social media management or coming in to do a post. I mean, do you feel the pressure sometimes to meet others' expectations still, or is it just not a thing? I, I feel like a, a problem that I still deal with when it comes to, uh, like, businesses, restaurant owners, and stuff like that, it's my age. Because uh, everyone is typically so much older, so they're, you, you know, I feel like an older person is more respected, you know? Uh, but when it, when it comes to me, I, I've had some situations that I just don't get the same respect I know, you know, you would, you know? Um, is that kind of what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's what? that's something yeah, I, feel, I deal with still. So. Okay, so why, but why, I don't understand why that would be. If if you have a big following, if you you have the ability to blow up restaurants, I don't understand why that would be an issue for other people. It's kind of surprising. Uh, we got to ask certain restaurant owners. They know who they are. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. Um, right, because I remember we <laughs> would have conversations about this, and they would be calling you, like, buddy- <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's another thing though. I wasn't even talking about that, but yeah, there's there's like almost every male restaurant owner that's older than me calls me buddy or like uh, yeah, buddy. I, I feel like this is another that's one, but so I can't think weird. of it. That's but they call me hey buddy. I'm like I'm not your son, you know. I'm like I'm trying to do business with you. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm not your son. <laughs> but there's other business owners who have have who have crossed the line, and, and, and I know they would never talk to you like that. I know they would never talk to Drew like that or Paul like that, for sure. Paul would walk right out. Drew would walk right out. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's my age. I don't know if it's, you know, I don't really know. Maybe it's intimidation. I don't really don't know what it is, but it, I, I'm just pushing forward. <laughs> right. Yeah. But also, um, 
with that, there's also the expectation that people have if they spend XX amount, mm -hmm. have you do a post. I mean, sometimes I feel a pressure for I mean, the post bombs and what the fuck am I going to do? Right. It's just a disappointing thing. They're never going to pay me again to do it on a post. Yeah, I just I just let them know typically like, you know, nothing in social media is promised. I might think a video. It's typically the videos that I think suck that do the best. But yeah, I, I well, just... Well, you must think every video of yours. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I let I usually let the restaurant owners know that uh, just to kind of avoid that pressure. I just let them know up front, like, hey, I'm, I'll am i post this, but I, I can't guarantee it's going to blow up. You know, that's typically yeah. what I say. Yeah. But at least you got two shots of it with TikTok, with IG. It's funny how some of some sometimes oh, one yeah. is better than the other. or, or the, one, the, one will usually difference. hit. Yeah, one yeah. will usually hit. So if Instagram brings in a lot of business and brings them a lot of followers, like the just my my most recent post as of right now, the Conde one, it's a rest Mexican restaurant. Yep. Um, I think I got them over a thousand followers, like nothing in like a f So Instagram brings in followers, TikTok brings in more like hungry people into the restaurant, but typically one will hit. Yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. Awesome. Um, Conde, uh, which is one of Drew's uh, accounts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He invited me in. Yeah. Yeah. The food's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing that's I find very interesting is your relationship with Drew, aka Unlocked, and how it has flourished into a business partnership with Elove Always. And I think for so many people and people that come up to me, I've often been asked in the past if I knew Drew or if I was friends with him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because he's such a superstar in the game. Um, you, as someone kind of in the beginning was just starting out, was able to make a great connection with him and have it evolve into a really cool partnership. And I think, you know, everyone wants to hang out with Drew, but how did you initially in the beginning uh, make that connection and, and have him, you know, have this relationship flourish? Uh, yeah. When uh, the first time I ever met him, so I just sent him a DM on Instagram and I invited him to one of my clients, Fruit Juice. Um, they used to be at, they're not a client anymore, but they used to be at, in the Gallery Mall. Yep. And I invited him to come do a post um, and he came by. It's the first time I met him. And from there, um, I, so I've always knew that when I came into this, I, I, you know, I wanted to create a business from this and I always knew that relationships are so important, right? In your network. So I wanted to build a good relationship to, with him and he ended up, you know, being a really cool guy and we just kind of developed the friendship from there. And yeah, now, now we're, so he, he gave me the opportunity to be, to be a partner with, with, with love, with love always, which is a, a burger concept that, that we're opening up soon. Amazing. So you've done three pop-ups. Yeah. Right? At Truffles and Bacon. Yes. And um, I've had the burgers twice. Excellent smash burgers with the the really great crispy crust. They're even better now. They're even better yeah, now. They're even better now. Yeah, we 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 Fuck. tweak some some stuff so it's even right. better, yeah. Right. So Drew Blee's up way back during uh lockdown. He was mm -hmm. grilling his hibachi up on the roof. Oh yeah. Blowing these Making up. Them. No one could have them, and he was just showing off. Yeah, the the first time I, I I tried them, I was like, wow, this is I can eat this, you know, I'd probably die if I eat it every day. But <laughs> right, right. But uh, I'm sure you've had to try. So much. good, man. So what makes them better yeah. now? Uh, so it's a new blend of meat. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a new blend of meat that's super fresh, and we were able to adjust exactly the percent that we want as far as like um, lean to fat content, and it's it's just really good quality product. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm excited for everyone to try it. It's, it's, it's going to be so good. Can you give more news about this now? Uh, like when, well, there's where, not who? too much. There's not really too much news to say, but okay. uh, we, we do have a LOI on a location. So we're, we're just waiting to hear back and, you know, we're still scouting other spots. So it, it's just coming soon, I guess you can say. Not really too much big news yet. So, But the plan is multiple locations. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, was... I want to make it multiple locations and we'll, we'll make sure it happens for sure. Yeah, that's that's the goal. I definitely want to make it big. Wow. Restaurant tour, add restaurant tour to your resume as well. So, is this? Do you imagine this being a thing for you down the road, like multiple concepts? And all uh, I, I'm just going with the flow right now. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe it yeah. could be. Yeah. I mean, I, I've I've always had ideas for for different food concepts even before I kind of started this because I've always, when I was younger, I would always kind of try to create different business ideas. Some were food. Some were e-commerce. Some were you know, car industry businesses. And yeah, I never know. It might, yeah. So I've always obviously been into food, right? So I might, I might make this a, a thing where I'll open up 
different concepts or partner up with different people or maybe me and you open up more and not sure but i'm just going with the flow but i, I definitely want to see how how this first project goes super exciting i mean the product's great i mean that's that's Dude, for sure it's, it's fire yeah it's so really good. and obviously the marketing is locked down um, yeah we we got the uh, Jewish brother Kevin was saying was telling one of one of the agents was like yeah we got the cheat codes <laughs> yeah we got the cheat codes we're the cheat codes to right. blow <laughs> yeah fuck yeah uh, we're at five minutes again oh, so okay. what do you want to do another two I don't minutes. know do you want to do some hot sauce we don't, is it in yet I don't think we have it yet second win second I think I grew a chest hair yeah <laughs> that was some good stuff <laughs> let's talk about some of the businesses you have blown up. I mean, it's a stellar track record, and I also wanted to note that I mean, there's still a lot of doubters in, outside of the circle that still don't believe people like you or me bring in business. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's down crazy. the road we should do a testimonial one with some of the owners. Um, but yeah, have all the owners lined up <laughs> <But> <laughs> one by one. <laughs> yeah, we'll do like an infomercial. Yeah, talk, talk about, you know, they'll just say their percentage, how much right. sales, you know, have gone up and stuff. Right. <laughs> Damien, you know, tripled our business in less than a week, and my skin is so much clearer. <laughs> um, but let's talk about some of them now. I mean, early on, Don Claudio. Yeah, I was early on, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you blew up uh, Amano. Yeah, um, uh, Don Claudio's <laughs> story is actually pretty pretty interesting, too. So uh, I was, me and my girlfriend were looking. It was like, it was a few years back now, but it was like Mexico Independent, Independence Day. And we were like, let's go get some carnita somewhere, you know? And I wanted to go to a spot that, you know, wasn't a client I've never been to so just so I can go eat. Right. Yeah. I feel like those are most uh, more authentic spots. I feel like. True. So we just looked it up uh, and I was like, oh, shoot, this actually I, I had to send a message to this business, but they never responded to me. Um, so we, we went there. I went in and we ordered some food and I asked them, I was like, hey, you know, yeah, I, I do this like I don't know exactly what I said, but I was like something along the lines of I do this like you know food video stuff. I have a page. Do you guys mind if I just you know film it? Um, like you know I won't you know I don't charge or anything. You know just I just want to film. It. I'll still pay off for uh, for the full and for the food in full. Um, and so they let me film it, posted it, and the next day it, it blew up. And they were so busy they didn't even respond. They didn't even get back to me for like a week. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was over a week for sure, and um, and they were like, you know, sorry, we haven't gotten back to you, um, but we just been so busy that we just been trying to catch up, and we haven't like had a break or whatever. But that that was that was a pretty interesting story. <laughs> yeah, Carnitas Don Claudio, which is located on North Jones. Um, I've been several times. And that was like two years ago. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was like uh, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, or is it 2020? 20, 2020 probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was during COVID. Also, yeah. they had just opened up. Yeah, they opened up during COVID. They opened up like uh, maybe like in July or June, something like that. So it was like it was hard. And then yeah, the TikTok blew up, and that's what brought people in. Yeah, and the food's amazing. Amano um, too, like you had mentioned. Yeah, Amano was like yeah a whole new wave of people that came in, lines out the door literally for a month straight. You told me it was like three months or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something crazy like that. Yeah. Three hour waits. Every day. <laughs> he named a fat baby after you just because. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. Actually, yeah. Amano, I, I, I can, you know, give a lot of credit to Amano because Amano was like the first restaurant that, oh, Amano was the restaurant that like catapulted me to a different level on TikTok because it was my like my first super, super viral video with like 7.8 million. I don't even know what it's at now. It's probably like still around there, but 7.8 million. And it took my, I remember I was, uh, I was working at my job in you know, my old job and I was in, in the walk-in and I was just looking at my Instagram cause I, it was going viral. Yeah. And I was like, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I was maybe like at, I was close to 10 K, you know, it went viral. 15k 20k <laughs> tiktok was at 10 20 30 40 50 60 100 200 yeah <laughs> kind of blew it up so amano i definitely that was that video that kind of took it to everything to another level yeah there were many days where they ran out of ingredients they had to shut down at like 6 p.m oh, i saw that yeah. yeah i remember that and they would just count the people outside and figure out okay you're the last in line oh really <laughs> we're done yeah all we yeah crazy yeah the amount the hooked lv fat baby you've never had it you gotta go try it. It's uh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, when, when I was making, I was like, man, my favorite type of pasta is um, chicken piccata. So it's like citrusy, lemony, 
I was like, man, imagine that in that fat baby. So I, we got that, and chicken wings are also another one of my favorite foods. I can eat chicken wings every single day. And yep. they only had the garlic fennel ones, right? Yep. So we could put yep. the garlic fennel ones in there, and that's it, right? I think that's all that's in there. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's, it's killer. It's, it's one of my favorites. It's, yeah, it's And uh, I see people order it still all the time. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone tag me or post it in a long time, but... <laughs> yeah, um... I mean, so what are some of the other, other restaurants? I mean, currently Antidote. Oh, Antidote is another one. Them. Yeah, yeah, oh, pretty much box. almost every time. Yeah, but so one, one thing you gotta understand is that you know they call Vegas the Ninth Island, which is obviously that the Hawaiian culture here is so so big and so yeah. strong. So yeah. whenever um, a Hawaiian person from you know from Hawaii opens up a a concept or something, they're automatically gonna get a lot of support. But with with the plaf- with my platform, it just took them to a whole nother level. Like with the the first big big video that blew up, they were in, insanely like the lines were. It was I can't, I don't even know how long the line was. Like if you if you look at one of my story posts on I, my I Instagram, yeah, the stories. line is like huge. It's like you know you know where the pumpkin patch parking lot is in IKEA. Yeah. So imagine like the end of it, going and you know how big it is. Pretty big. It's a big parking lot. It, it went all the way to like the entrance where the cars go in. It was pretty crazy. Jesus. Talk about some place I should name a menu item after. Yeah, and it was within 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah, within 24 hours of posting. And that's really the magic of TikTok. The the instant impact when it blows up right. is literally next day. Yeah. Yeah. Not even 24 hours. Like yeah. Within 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. So another one, Sayulitas, is a newer one. Those gigantic bacon Huge covered burritos. burritos. Yeah. So the owner, Tanya, was telling me, she was like, you know, we're, we're so busy. I think we need another restaurant. <laughs> she, and I was like, oh, wow. Because um, they didn't want to start TikTok because they were like, you know, we're so busy. We don't, we don't want to do more marketing because <laughs> right. our, our staff is overwhelmed. Right. <laughs> uh, so we ended now, now we do now we do that. Um, but I, I think that's another, I guess, client success story. So yeah. that's is pretty cool. It's a newer one, more recent, I guess you could say. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of them like that, too. Even the one-offs, I mean, it's just incredible, the track record. Yeah, it's been just a one-off post, kind of like, you know, Conde is another one, probably. Yeah. You know, it's just, obviously, not my account, but it's, uh, you know, just one post that I did, and it did pretty good. So for business owners, and actually, it seems like a lot of business owners listen to this, um, what would it take to have you uh, go into their place? I mean, does it have to be something that's interesting to you more, or is it just dollars so there's a there's a lot of uh there's a lot of concepts that hit me up that i feel like are kind of basic and i don't mean, i don't mean that in any type of like rude way right I like get, i get it um you got to think of it in like a content creation way it's like i don't know how well this will do if i post it i, I want to help you guys as much as i can but you know the you know there's a hundred other pizza shops in the in, in in the city for example right i can't just post a pepperoni pizza i i, I need to you know, I want to post something that's different, unique. So sometimes I, I ask the restaurant owners, like, do you have a menu item that's like special or maybe secret menu? Uh, just so I can kind of be- get a better idea of what they have to offer. But typically just send me, send me an email and I kind of just look into the restaurant, see if it's, it will be a good fit for, for like the page. And, and I just respond and we kind of work something out from there. Nice. So, yeah, it's not always about the money either. Yeah, if I really like it, I'll, I'll, I'll go in. But yeah, it's it's typically the like what the product is, what they have to offer. Yeah, I find myself DMing a lot of restaurants that I'm not interested in after they reach out to me and, and tell them this is not something I would actively seek out myself if yeah. I'm looking to eat. I can imagine you you so, have a lot of spots, right? Because I'm a snob, drink. and um, and that's kind of how I say it. And then if even if they offer money, I'm just not into doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always about the money. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also not always about the free food. <laughs> Because you know, true. free food doesn't doesn't help pay the to pay the bills. <laughs> no, no. So that's what a lot of restaurant owners don't understand. I get a lot of emails. You know, come in, you will give you oh, two free bobas. I'm oh, like, yeah, oh man, yeah. <laughs> two free bobas. I'm like, two free bobas. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you gotta offer a little bit more than that, no? Like, because boba, even that's still kind of hard to blow up too. Yeah, in, I in think a way, yeah. Tough. There's so many boba spots. Like, people are people in Vegas when they find a spot that's a good boba spot, they go to that one and that one only. Like, for example, me, I only go to Brew Tea Bar. Yeah. That's the only spot I go to. Like, I, I've never, I don't think I've, I would go to another spot after, like, going to Brew Tea Bar. It's just so, so good. <laughs> I agree. Um, and it's hard to do content at Brew Tea. I mean, very few people get 
behind the scenes there? I don't think anybody has. I, I've, I've you know? gotten behind the scenes once okay. a long time ago. JT invited me. Oh, nice. It was like maybe like three years ago now. But uh, yeah, I just filmed something real quick. And yeah, this is my favorite spot for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Is that your favorite spot? So I'm not a big boba guy at all, but Ayumi always craves brew tea. Oh, really? So that's where we go. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a good spot. And then Feng Cha is actually number two. Really? Uh, so we there's some commonality here because... <laughs> you used to run it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay runs I, it now. I did. Yeah, that was that was that was a while ago too. Yeah, it's honestly it's 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 tough to to do boba. Yeah. I mean the content. I've seen the content now. It's amazing. It's beautiful, right? But um, it's just hard to blow up because kind of like what I mentioned. When someone goes to a spot, like they just don't go anywhere else. Like I would it's never. Tough. I don't think I would ever go to another boba shop unless it's open in, at two a.m. and I want to go. You know, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would be the only thing. Maybe stay open late. But yeah, there's yeah. there's only so much you can explain the flavors, you know, through the phone. Right. Especially with boba, because it's all just multicolored anyway. Yeah, like my drink at at, uh, at Brew Tea Bar is uh, the pistachio milk tea latte with almond milk, and add some sea cream, um, like sea cream in there. The foam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and shake it up, and it's so good. And okay. I get I get seventy five percent sugar. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try that. You gotta try that if you like pistachio. If yeah. you like pistachio, yeah. Yeah. Pist- I, yeah, that's, it's, it's really good. I usually do taro because it tastes like Ooh, Oreo cream. Taro's really good, too. Yeah. So what's coming up for you in the near future that you're excited about? What's, uh, uh, well, first, with Love Always, for sure, it's something that I'm, I'm really excited to do. It's going to be something that I'm going to put a lot of work into. Um, so you might see me back there sometimes, you know, because <laughs> uh, it's, some, it's something that I really, really want to you know, I want to learn the ins and out, the ins and out of, of how to open up for con- the concept from from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. You know, how to train this, everything. I want to learn everything. You know, and and so I'm I'm really I'm really excited for that. As far as like the brand hooked LV, I do have some some pretty cool things in, in the works. Um, and I, like for example, I just did the the whole rebrand. So what I'm excited for is to put my face out there more. Um, as far as like my TikTok content, Instagram. And then I have my friend who's going to help me film my YouTube stuff. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do that, too. I, I, I want to do it completely different from everybody else. Everybody else is like Got a it. tourist page, right? You, yeah. you know, someone who doesn't live here is going to look up, you know, best Korean spot, best uh, Mexican taco spot in town. Like, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to be a tourist page. Um, so I kind of want to evolve to more, you know, Damien content. I, I don't know how I'm going to do exactly. I have some ideas already um, that, that we've written down and how, we, how we're going to kind of do everything. So it's going to be pretty cool. And I'm also going to have, like, guests on there too, like NFL players and all that. So that's that's something that I – that's going to be – it's going to be different for sure than what everybody else is doing. So that's something I'm excited for. Wow. Damn. And then – so with the YouTube stuff – well, actually, let's go back to With Love Always. Are you thinking, like, six months, less than six months it's going to – I would say, yeah, less is, probably less than six months. Okay. Um, it's really, really hard to find spots because we, we, want, we want specific locations, right? And obviously, we can't get specific locations, but um, we have an, um, an ideal area for, for where we want to open up our first mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really just a waiting game, waiting for spots to close down or give up their lease. So, yeah, it's, it's really hard right now in this market to, to find good spots that we personally like. Cause there, there's, I mean, uh, I mean, I've, I've had agents send me different spots every single day, but I mean, I just would, I wouldn't even drive there to go, you know, to right. to right. whatever. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah, it's really hard to find a spot. So well, honestly, we're just taking our time with it. We want this to kind of, obviously, nothing can be perfect, but we want at least the location to be, you know, good spot. So maybe six months, maybe more, maybe less. Okay. Maybe next month. You know, you never nice. know. <laughs> I saw a story on season four. Uh, maybe. Is that happening? The the next pop-up? Uh, we I have, to, I have to talk to Drew about that. Okay. Yeah, we have to talk about that together. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> and then for YouTube, are you going to still focus on food primarily? Yeah, it'll still, be, it's still, it'll, it'll still be related to... Um, it'll, it'll still be related to food for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I don't know where it'll, it'll drift off to later on. That's exciting. But... The reason why I'm going to stick it to food still in some type of unique way is because obviously my people follow me because of the food, really, you know. Um, so I, I can kind of draw some some people to go check out the YouTube channel through that, like kind of pretty fast. Right. And then later on kind of develop into something different. Cool. 
Um, it's about time we do something. All right. Well, uh, hot sauce? No hot sauce. I guess no? Mindy, was, Mindy was supposed to deliver it. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more. Okay, let's one more let's go another one. You feel it? A little bit. I really? Think I, I think I'm definitely red. <laughs> do you drink a lot? Uh, I don't think I. I don't think I do. Uh, I think people have the impression that I'm a, a full blown alcoholic. Dude, I don't really drink too much. No. All right, I can get a little more. That, yeah. Phil said he wants to feel it. I joke that I I only drink when I go out, but that's like <laughs> seven days a week. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really drink too much. Yeah, I, I've never really been like a drinker. Like even for like my twenty first birthday, it was like during COVID, so all the clubs were closed, every bar was That's closed, right. everything was shut down. Couldn't do anything. What did you do? I, I got a hotel room um, I, I, on the strip and just kind of hung out. <laughs> oh yeah, you went to M Resort. No, no, no. Right? Wa 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 Waldorf Astoria. Is that Waldorf, how you say it? Waldorf Astoria. Waldorf Astoria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. got a room oh, nice. there. Yeah, I, I use. Pimp. Yeah, it was it was it was it was a nice suite. It was a suite. It was pretty cool. I just kind of hang out. Yeah, nothing nothing special. I went to like my first club like a year after, <laughs> when things kind of opened up a little bit. Right. All right. So instead of ten questions, we're actually gonna do twenty questions. Okay. For that, we'll do a cheers. Let's do that. Cheers. We're gonna do hot sauce. Oh, here it is. Oh, there you go. Hold it in front of a Last dab is what we have. Last All dab. Right. So the plan was actually do the last dab as the first dab and, and just get it done. But I, I don't know if I'm really looking forward to this at all. Oh, no, that's yeah. perfect. So that's, hey, Popeye's is fire, you know? That's what I got. Um, so we got should we do it now? 12 piece. I think we should just do it now. All right, cheers. Fuck. Oh, man. All right, you ready? Oh, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good so far with the vinegar. So I'm not really into super spicy anymore. I think maybe when I was your age, in my day. <laughs> um, yeah. Should we drink water? All right. Okay. Uh, Damien, if social media didn't work out for you, uh, what job do you think you'd be doing right now? Job? Yeah. What would, be, what would you be? I would probably be stuck in sales still because I have no other skills. Um, so... Uh, before um, doing this, I worked at Whole Foods. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And honestly, that was like my favorite job ever. What'd you like about it? The manager, the team. Okay. Yeah, my manager, Ryan, was like the best guy ever. He was super cool. Yeah. Ryan, uh, Ryan and Nilko were like our two main managers. They were young, super cool. <laughs> they were super cool, yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> sometimes I think about it, I'm like, man, I might just go... Worked there for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it's so like, fun. They were super flexible with you having time off when you came in to do. Shows. Oh yeah, so when yeah, I like I that was cool. When I did my interview at first with them, um, right when I did my interview, I told Ryan <laughs> I was like, I told Ryan I was like, um, you know, I I I'm trying to start my own business, and I might leave, you know, within a few months or so. I just want to let you know if you're okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, it's pretty hot. I don't know if it's because I'm laughing now. I don't want to drink water. Uh, should we do another? You want to do another? Yeah, Maybe in five minutes. Five, five minutes? Okay. Five minutes. You got All a right. timer? I'll turn it on. Oh, man. I might need a tequila. Um, so I have to instead of water. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sweating. so I, that's what I told Ryan. And it was, it was, uh, it was, it's a really cool job, honestly. And I was like, sometimes I think about it, I was like, man, I might just go back for fun, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's your... Okay, so someone walks into Whole Foods, they order from the food area. I love the garden salads and all that stuff. What would be your go-to Whole Foods order now that you've worked there, you've, seen, you've gone behind the scenes? Man, this is fire chicken pesto sandwich that the sandwich bar makes. Okay. Really good. I obviously modify mine, make add a little bit more sauce and stuff. But the pizzas are pretty good. I'll bust out a few hundred pizzas a night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people told me. Good There's like a pizza. chicken bacon ranch pizza, and you can make any pizza vegan there too. So if you're vegan, you can go try it. There you go. All right, uh, give the people listening one important tip to making a killer food TikTok. Killer food TikTok. Well, here's, first, here's the quality the of the video has to be good. Quality of the video. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you shoot it in uh, good quality. Maybe the a good iPhone. Um, I see lighting is always terrible. For a oh, lot they got lighting too. So you got to make sure you have a good light. 
get yourself a $30 light on Amazon, small one that's handheld. You know, ask to go back to the kitchen to film. And you know what I mean? <laughs> when, it comes, when it comes to a voiceover, um, you're going to use your little, you know, you go to Target and get the little $20 Apple headphones. That plug so, in. Oh, you, okay. So you use the headphones. Yeah, 20 bucks. You plug I've in gone through like seven of them. Here. No, not seven. I've gone through like four or five of them because I lose them. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm good with it, though. I have two that I always keep on me. It's interesting because I, I know some people that still talk into the phone. Oh, yeah. That's horrible. I've, I've done it and you test it and it's just so bad. Yeah. The, 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 keys, the pop, pop, pop. And, and I've pop. tried good quality mics, too. I've tried a. Uh, um, I think it's like a hundred dollar, uh, I don't even know the brand. And I've tried a lavalier mic uh -huh. and I've also tried another mic from Amazon that you use, you put on top of cameras and, oh, the, and the, the iPhone. One? Yeah. And the iPhone one has always been the best one. Yeah. It just sounds more authentic and real and crispy. So the iPhone headphones, you need an adapter now. Yeah. Obviously. And as far as like doing the voiceover, you just gotta just be yourself. You gotta develop your own style. Like when I do my own, I know some people script it. Yeah. I don't script anything. I just go straight for it. Yeah, it feels so natural. And and I've kind of learned <clears throat> that recently. I don't know if that's a reflection of the post not doing well, but I think the script just feels too too straightforward, scripty. too salesy, <laughs> too scripty. Yeah. yeah. I got to get away from that too. It went away now. That was fast. Well, I still feel a little bit, but it kind of went away. All right. Whatever you say. You want to do another one? Uh, we got two minutes. Two minutes. There, two minutes. I still feel it a little bit, but uh, yeah, scripted. Yeah, I don't. I don't do any scripts. Uh, you, you, you can tell when something is scripted. Yeah. Sometimes it sounds really nice. Um, uh, you like you're really good with it. Like yeah. with your scripted post, you're you're really really good with it. Yeah, I feel like it's because you still add your own. It would save you more time, it. but yeah, I need to add more character into some of them because otherwise it just seems like I'm reading a Yelp review. Yeah, for mine, I just. Plug it in and, you know, hey. One take and just go? <laughs> Not one take. Okay. Yeah, multiple takes, but uh, just uh, so, off the top of my head, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, authenticity, speaking from the heart. I mean, those are all. Yeah, I've only, the only one takes I've done are, like, super short videos. Right. That's, like, you know, something super simple, like a donut. But, like, for example, partage, that was pretty challenging. Right. Yeah. There was a lot going on. Yes, and, so and I'm not really on? used to eating like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I have a hard time doing the dining and audio like if i'm not going in the kitchen i'm not shooting the cooking then to do just a, a dinner report just at the table all right seems to be an issue with me and i think it reflects in the performance of the videos yeah because i feel like when we film the like the the, the cooking videos um there's more to talk about more yeah. action you know yeah versus when someone is just putting the plate down or something right Here's the grilled sandwich, you know, <laughs> like here's this, you know? <laughs> you know, here's the grilled cheese is good, you know? Yeah. Versus like when they're making it. Um, well, I guess you can kind of say it too when, when it comes to like, you can kind of say the same things you would. But I feel like when it comes to like making the voiceover, I, I see what's going on. So I'm like, okay, dad, the cheese and this and this and that. So I, it kind of it flows more natural for me. Yeah. Yeah. But some people are good at that though. I know a lot of people are fucking. Yeah, it. but uh, but I think that's uh, and I think what what makes those people different is that they're they're more of a personal brand then. So that's what I'm gonna switch my content over to a little bit, mm -hmm. kind of put in those the food going down and stuff like that versus the kitchen. Yeah, I think a lot of people would be super interested in in what you're doing no matter what. So I think that's cool. Yeah, I might try it out. Yeah, oh, well, I am gonna try it out. Yeah. So it'll be a new video style. Keep things fresh, you know. Okay, so it's 3 a.m., you're wide awake, and you're starving. What's the plan for food? Oh, man, 3 a.m., and I'm starving? I'm either driving to Roberto's or boiling eggs. <laughs> At home? Yeah. Just eggs alone, though? Yeah, maybe. I, I assume I have some rice in the fridge because I always do. Oh, man, yeah. for me? It might be some Del Taco. That's oh. probably what like, that's Yeah, there's one close to my house. And it's open 24 hours on weekends. So I'll probably just get some Del Taco, yeah. I went to the Barstow Del Taco just uh, a couple weeks ago. W what makes that one unique? Because I've heard so it was So they unique. have a Barstow menu um, with Barstow. different items. Like the tacos are much meatier. Oh, wow. There's uh, more cheese, more lettuce. And then they have street tacos. Barstow's like three hours away, right? 
I think cool. so. It's halfway between here and LA. So I'd say maybe two hours, two, two and a half hours. Half. I gotta go try it. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah. So they do carne asada tacos, they street tacos. You know what I like from Del Taco? What do you like? Their cheeseburger. Never had the burger yet. The double dough cheeseburger with bacon what? is like one of the one of the best best cheeseburger. One of the best, best cheeseburgers. Best. Best. Nah. Fast food yeah, fast food drive through cheeseburger. Why don't we get a burger at Del Taco? The oh, name is Del Taco. Never had it in their front. Never had it. Ask oh, fuck no. for... There's no way. Is like one of the best drive-through cheeseburgers. It's, yeah. yeah, best drive-through, best drive-through 24-hour cheeseburger is the Del Taco one. The okay. double-dough cheeseburger with bacon. I asked for... Uh, I like onion. I asked for extra onion on mine because usually I don't put too much. Uh, and I get sometimes no tomato. And I do extra burger sauce on the side. Hmm. Okay, I'll try that. Actually, I will try that. Next side. time at 2 a.m., I will skip Roberto's Dude, you got to try it. Burrito. No, burger. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Breakfast burger. The, oh, you get the breakfast burrito get is what the you're breakfast saying. Burrito oh, okay, okay. So I'll skip that. I'll go to Del Taco. I know I know one that's nearby me. But yeah, I've, I've heard this about the burger. You got to try it. It's really good. Um, and I also, either that, either I get that or I get the, the two for five burritos. So, um, so I, sometimes I get the spicy grilled chicken one. Um, and I usually get two of those because I don't really like the other ones. But yeah, the tacos are good too, though. But typically the burgers fire. Speaking you gotta try fire, it. Speaking of fire. Oh man, another we, one. We, do you want to do this again? Or? No, I'm down. Yeah, we can do it again. Okay. It made it more interesting. <laughs> then you, then you pour it. All right, let's do it. Okay. Fuck. It wasn't. It wasn't. It's. It's like super. Like it gets you like right away. But um. I mean, Tears welling up. This is such a moving episode. After it's been amazing to see grow up, Damien. <laughs> um, and I, I'm gonna need some alcohol. Yeah, I'll give you this small one. We'll just let's do this. Oh, you want some more? Yeah, I'll take a little bit. More. Here, I'll let you pour these, and I'll, and I'll do the hot sauce. I'm like sweating. <laughs> what should we do first, the tequila or this, or the chicken? Chicken. Chicken. Okay. All right, the sauce kind of fell a little bit yeah, on yours. I'll, I'll get on the bottom. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. Wow. I see the sweat dripping down your forehead. All right. Like you it. see it? Yeah. Cheers. It's fucking real right now. I, get, I think my Mexican jeans are coming in a little bit, hopping me out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, but it. it, it buy a pair of those right away. <laughs> right, right away, it, 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 it's, it's pretty bad. All right, ready? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I need to bring like an Elvis towel while I wear around my neck. <laughs> Holy shit. The initial flavor is pretty good. Mmm. I like it. I mean, this, chicken, this chicken isn't bad. I haven't had a Popeyes in forever. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah. Wow. For two hour nuggets. Oh, they've been here for two hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought them on the way because I figured we needed something. And uh, I, I just came from Suzuya, uh, and Suzuya cake would not go well with this hot sauce. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I actually the the flavor of it is coming in more now. Like, like yeah. the flavor of the hot sauce. I, at first, I was just so scared about the spiciness, but now, nah, now you, I kind of feel the flavor a little bit more. It's true. Shout out, shout out for turning on the AC. <laughs> oh yeah, it's getting a little hot. Yeah. All right. Um, everyone has their level for an acceptable post, like the minimal number of likes that people can live with. That was a big one, Phil. Mine has been, you know, for me on <laughs> IG, my acceptable post <coughs> is 3K likes. And if it's under that, then I, I look at myself as a failure. 30K views on TikTok. What about you? Um, for a bad post on Instagram... Probably like uh, under a thousand. No, I, uh, so a minimum of an acceptable post. Oh, minimum acceptable, like yeah, under a thousand. Like three thousand for sure. Yeah, on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, TikTok, <clears throat> acceptable, like 70, 80. Okay, you can live with it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I, I did pretty good. Okay. Under that, I'm like, oh man, I didn't do too good. Right. Right. This one hits a lot harder. I feel like the sauce now. I, I'm a little more comfortable now. Really? Yeah, with this one. Maybe you didn't get too much. Yeah, because... <laughs> oh, it's all on the... It's all on the, on the napkin. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, what are your DMs like these days? Um, just restaurants, typically, or just... Uh, 
where is your location? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would imagine you get that too. Every day it's like, where's your address? I'm like, yeah. to my house or what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, like, to me in my head, I've thought about it before and I'm like, if I were to go on my own page as a, as a as a viewer, I guess, as a consumer, I would not think I'm a restaurant. No, nobody like, reads. Like there's there's burritos and and there's desserts and there is a grilled fish. Grilled fish. <laughs> like, how do you think I'm a restaurant? Where in my bio does it say I'm a restaurant? You know, right. right. There's no address. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe now that it's a picture of me, I'll stop getting those. Wait, yeah. but you still get them, and it's a All picture of you, right? All the time. The Hooked LV food court would go off. Yeah. Yeah, I would have so much different stuff. <laughs> yeah. So recently for me, it's been a lot of uh, personal prof uh, chefs that w they do catering. They oh, really? They go to their house and film them cooking and boost their catering page. So I've, I've gotten a few of uh, uh, people doing, like, stuff at their house also yeah. uh not like chefs but just people cooking out of their house yeah oh wow this one hits me pretty good <laughs> <laughs> uh, people uh. cooking from like their house or doing like a little vendor and uh either i don't respond to them or uh i just say like i typically just do restaurants you know Oh man! Yeah, I can't do the professional, sh professional yeah. chef thing. Going to people's houses that you don't know is super weird, and then who knows what's going to happen after that? Yeah, like going to like a little. Yeah, I just usually typically go somewhere that's established. Yeah, more comfortable for me, and I know it's a restaurant, and I know I can, like, because think about it like this: like, what do my followers go to someone's house to go eat? You know, like. No. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah, um, maybe not. To pin or not to pin <laughs> your post. What do you mean? Like, you know, you have that option to post oh, to yeah. pin posts. I see every, every every everybody pins their most like viral videos. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't I don't pin stuff really. Okay, so give me a reason why you don't pin. No thought of it. Okay. No no reason to pin, no reason not to pin. I just never really had thought of it. I've never said, Okay, wow, this has a hundred thousand likes, I'm gonna pin it. Right. Yeah, so I think most people just pin their biggest ones. The biggest ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the TikTok creator um, seminars that I was at, they were saying how it's better to pin to kind of introduce yourself to brands so they know what you're all about in three posts instead of just scrolling through. But I think, especially with an account like yours, I mean, you should be charging extra to have the pin there because it's the front you know what? I've never offered. Uh, I've never offered to pin anything before, yeah. but I might use it. Or I might start pinning, but I, um, I've never really like thought of it though. Like most, you know, a lot of videos I've done good, but I don't really think of pinning them. I just kind of let them do their do their own thing. But yeah, I think that would be a good upsell for creators. Like, hey, I'll pin your post for a month. You know, yeah. an extra thousand, three thousand bucks. You know, whatever their price is. Yeah, oh, for you should be definitely. In the 3K range, I would imagine, at the very least. I don't know, man. A lot of these restaurants don't like paying people. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this is what sucks about the industry, though. You know, is that a restaurant doesn't think about paying us that much. Um, some people might get it. Some people might not, though. But, you know, it is what it is. I, different industries, for sure. Like, a good example is um, Jessica Wu. Let's make some lunch for my kids. Yeah, like she can charge crazy numbers. Yeah, but there's only so much that we can charge restaurant owners, even if we think you know we're the shit or whatever, and we want to charge five k a post. There's really only so much you can charge. I feel like yeah, so like a, a small mom and pop, you know, or a regular restaurant. Yeah, there's a number they have to be comfortable with, and then honestly, if you're not bringing in one k worth of business, then why the fuck are they even talking to you? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. the The thing that the way that I see it is we're we're bringing these restaurant owners thousands of lifetime customers. We're not just bringing them one customer. If they if they come in and and uh and and, and they have a good reaction, right? There's good customer service. The food is good. We're bringing in thousands of lifetime customers. Yeah. And that value is uh is is crazy. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy to me that it baffles me that you know these restaurant owners think that. You know, they don't respect what, what what we do. True. But, you know, having said that, there is 
you know, the restaurants definitely have to hold up their end of the bargain. Like, if you blow it up, they still need to deliver. And if they don't, and there's right. been instances where, for me, I, I know this has happened. You know, there are uh, so many of the customers are one and done. And I get the DM saying this was fucking terrible. Yeah, I, I tell I tell some restaurant owners, uh, wait, this is terrible. Like, oh, people people say this is despite a servo. Right, because they just didn't, they weren't ready. And oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So either the wait was super long or the quality dropped off after four hours in. So this is what I do. So um, when I, whenever I do a post and I see it's getting traction like right away, mm -hmm. I always text the owners to say, just be prepared. Like stock up extra the next day or if you can or before the end of the day today, you know, or, or whatever or, or tomorrow, make sure you stock up extra stuff because... Typically, whenever I, within the first two hours of posting, if I see it's doing well, like really, really well, Just give them the heads I up. tell them like, hey, you gotta, cool. you gotta be prepared. Yeah. yeah. Like Antidote, you know, no, well, a lot of restaurants, but I could give you an example of Antidote. You know, stock up extra salmon because- <laughs> Right, the bombs are gonna yeah, go off. The bombs are gonna go off for sure. <laughs> the salmon bombs. <laughs> so that's, that's usually what I do. Okay, good, good tip. Um, what's your go-to these days when you're not looking to be sober? So obviously you don't drink. No, I don't really drink. What's your, uh, what do you like to do? I like edibles. I'm a big fan of edibles. Um, I recently been getting into more into uh, weed mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. Um, but sometimes, you know, during the end of the day, kind of help me relax. Yeah. Um, I've been I've been trying that, but um, really it's just. Hanging out with my dogs at home, that's kind of what helps me. That's kind of like a a natural high, I guess. Sure. Just kind of hanging out. Dogs are definitely therapy. Yeah, dogs are therapy. Dogs are, are are like your own kids. Well, for me, they're like, you know, kids. I, I know I'm young, only 23, but it's kind of like having kids. Um, so that's kind of what, what I like to do, hang out with, at home with, with um, my dogs and sometimes a little bit of, of, of some weed. But <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. Yeah. Not yeah, not not too much of drinking though, for sure. I need to up my t-shirt game. I'm always seeing you sporting some great shirts. Oh yeah. Uh, what are some brands that you love right now? So if you want to get some nice like streetwear stuff, go to Culture Kings. They just opened up their their first United States location here in Vegas at oh, Caesars. That? At C oh yeah, Caesars Form okay. Shops. Yeah, and it's dude, it's huge. The the hat wall is like. I can't even describe it. You got to go see. It's like the hot wall is just insane. The store is so big. That store used to be a, a, a Marciano by Guess. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, it used yeah. to be that. Yep. And if you walk by, Marciano was kind of like small. Yeah. But I don't know how they made so much room for this store. They have a recording studio upstairs. What? They yeah. have upstairs? Upstairs. Recording studio upstairs. Okay. Full sound studio. Crazy. It's so... Let's do the podcast. It's pretty there. big. Yeah, that is, that'd be crazy. Um, they have a, a bar upstairs also. We can kind of go get alcoholic drinks and stuff. Um, they have shoes and clothes upstairs. They have a, a shoe like surgeon station where you can kind of have a guy who, who could customize the shoes, kind of customize the shoe for you. Downstairs, they have, you know, the hat wall, a bunch of other clothes too, fitting rooms and stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. That's where you can get some nice streetwear stuff. Okay. Culture Kings. Nice. Yeah, my first job when I moved to Vegas, I was at the forum shops. Oh, really? Yeah. Where? I was a timeshare body snatcher. Are you serious? Yeah. We had a desk right by Marciano, right by the, the that stupid show. So are those things actually, uh, actually scams? They're not scams. I mean, it's pretty clear what they do. We offer free show tickets. They come to see a presentation, and it's, it's up to them whether they buy or not. But yeah, I used to work for Marriott. Um, oh, wow. And I was there at the forum shops for, God, almost two years. Wow, two years. Yeah, listening to that statue show every fucking hour. Oh, the the water one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, Atlantis. Or yeah, uh, weren't called. they going to shut it down or something like that? Yeah, but people still go. It's like, yeah. you know, 80s Epcot. I Epicotics. do like that. I do like that Nike store, though. Yeah. The Nike store right there is pretty cool. It's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, uh, sneakerheads still go to that one. Yeah, sneakerheads. Um, if you want to buy Air Force Ones, typically everywhere else is going to be sold out, like around the city, but no one goes to buy shoes at the strip basically if you're a local you know yeah so they pretty much have if, well specifically Air Force Ones because it's a really popular um, shoe silhouette I guess mm -hmm. um, they're always they're always going to be in stock in there that's just a little tip I guess <laughs> there you go uh, what's a food trend that you love food trend yeah 
Is there one that exists? Give me an example of a food trend. I like uh, birria ramen. Oh, so like I that. I use better noodles. It, once someone figures out they can use real Japanese ramen noodles, I think it would take it to the Dude, that would be crazy. You know, that would be a good restaurant. No one's fucking doing it. Yeah. yeah, everyone just gets the the prepackaged yeah the bullshit. prepackaged ones yeah it costs like seventy five cents yeah uh, I don't know food trend to be honest that's a tough question for me hot I don't really hot chicken nah 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 <laughs> not hot chicken there. we won't go there no 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 not even not even going there it's just like I mean that is a food trend for sure but it's not something that I would eat every day yeah. That's a tough question. I feel like I'm taking too long to or answer this you, what, question. Or is there one that you despise? Anything that is like cheese crusted. I know it works really well, but like oh, yes, bacon okay. wrap burritos. I'm sorry, not bacon wrap. Uh, cheese crusted <laughs> burritos. Cheese crusted burritos. Like anything that's cheese crusted, I'm like, bro, that's gonna make my stomach hurt. But it's so good. Yeah, and every I, I people make anything cheese crusted. That's true. Cheese crusted tacos. That's true. Burritos. Anything, I feel like, I don't know. I'm not too big of a cheese person, I guess. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's just me. <laughs> maybe sushi rolls are next. Yeah. <laughs> but I really don't know. Food trend that I like, that's a question I wasn't prepared for. I feel like I got to... Well, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Well, I guess BDI ramen is pretty good. Yeah. I guess, but for but something that I go again as a food trend, I really don't know. So that's a tough question for me, I guess. Okay. Uh, favorite <laughs> old school band, singer, or rapper? And this will be interesting because I wanted to see what you say is old school because I'm... Uh, old, old school school. band, singer, or rapper. Man. I So I grew up... So uh, one of my cousins put me into rap and hip-hop at a young age. And what he would listen to is uh, uh, a lot of... And I know this is not going to be old school for you guys, but... Hey. Uh, he would listen to a lot of, like... Drake, Lil Wayne. Uh, I would say Lil Wayne is kind of like a cool old school rapper. But he's not even that old school, right? But from like, I guess from when I grew up, right. I was like seven years old listening to Lil Wayne, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah, so uh, old school. Yeah, but Lil, Lil, Wayne, Lil Wayne is a, I guess is, is, is a legend for sure. What's the first Star, Star Wars movie you saw? It's not, it Dude, wasn't Star Wars. You know what's crazy? What? I've never seen a Star Wars movie. Ayumi's like that too. You know, I, I've never seen a Star Wars movie. I've never seen Harry po uh, Harry Potter movie. I've never seen Dragon Ball Z. I've never played Pokemon. I've never done any of that stuff. I was a, a Power Rangers kid. Okay. Spider Man superhero kid. That's what I was. Yeah. I was. That's kind of what I loved when I was younger. But yeah, it's crazy, huh? I, I need to I need to watch some Star Wars movies some someday. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what your reaction is because obviously the effects are not up to snuff anymore. Right. I don't know if the story is going to carry it anymore. Yeah. But interesting. Yeah, but I know people are like religious about those things. Yeah. Uh, same. And speaking of Power Rangers, uh, uh, the, the Green Power Ranger, yeah, he recently passed away. And it's so crazy because uh, one of my, like, my, I still have a picture of it. My, like, one of my, like, Halloween costumes that I could remember wearing was, like, a, a red Power Ranger. So Power Rangers meant, meant a lot to me growing up. But yeah, no, definitely not like Harry Potter, Star Wars. Interesting. <laughs> Um, does a dream food, does a dream social media account exist for you? Like if you were to run a social media account? No, not really. Honestly. Okay. I'd rather own a restaurant than run an account. Which that's kind of me. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'd rather own a restaurant than run an account. Okay. Uh, just cause you know, being in this industry, you know, we've all kind of experienced it. You know, these restaurant owners, we blow them up and some of them just fire us. You know, Drew says the same thing every single time though, but, um, and yeah, I'd rather probably just say, hey, instead of running that account, I'd rather, I wish I could own that. I, I feel like that's kind of like my answer, I guess. I gotcha. Um, what's the best perk or opportunity you've received from being a social media foodie? Can you think of one that's been like- Perk or opportunity? Fuck? Yeah. Like you had, you met Graham Stephan, you had dinner with him. I mean, that's pretty fucking cool. I'm yeah, that was cool. So that. cool story actually. So I, I, I grew up, and I grew up, I uh, like my high school years. I would watch Graham Stephan so much, so I would learn everything about like fine, like you know, personal finance. Because my parents don't um, obviously aren't, aren't from the United States, so they don't know a lot of you know, f you know how finances kind of work and what the opportunities are that we have. Yeah. Um, so I always kind of wanted to teach myself and then help teach my parents too, you know. So Graham Stephan was a show that I mean, sorry, his his YouTube channel 
where I would learn about credit cards, you know, investing, finance, um, where to put your money at. Um, also real estate stuff like that's really what he talks about. And it's crazy because I was 16 years old watching him till like I was like, um, to this day kind of. Yeah. So being able to kind of take out a big YouTuber like that, take him out to eat was pretty cool. And all I did was send him a DM. I didn't think he was going to respond, but he responded like pretty fast within like a few hours. I was like, holy shit. I didn't think he was going to respond. <laughs> so it was like, you guys went to Herbs and Rye, right? Yeah, we went to Herbs and Rye. Yeah. So we were going to go to Kame because I asked him if he liked sushi. He said he liked sushi. And we were going to go to Kame. Um, I forgot what had happened. I think I remember. What was it? He balked at the price. What was that? What do you mean? He was he was against paying that much. No. Was I was gonna pay, I was gonna cover everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it was about money. Okay. I think it was I think I had gotten COVID or something like that. And we had to cancel it. Yeah, no, well, yeah, I know. I would never take someone out to eat and let them pay. I don't think it was about the price. Okay. Or maybe. I to be honest, I really don't remember. But we did go to Herbs and Rye. Yeah, we went to Herbs and Rye and, and we had a good time. He he loved it. And he ended up, he still goes to Herbs and Rye. One day he sent me a, a selfie of him and, and his girlfriend at Herbs and Rye. Be like, hey, we're, we're you know, coming back here because of you and stuff. That's cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, I would say that that's a pretty cool opportunity that, I, that I've had. Uh, other opportunities are just kind of like building a pretty cool network and relationship, uh, knowing some pretty powerful people in town or people that own some pretty cool stuff. And, you know, being able to go backstage and this and this and that. I feel like I would never get those opportunities, you know, if I wasn't doing what I do. And it's crazy because all I do is food stuff. But, I, you know, I still get opportunities in other industries, which is pretty cool. Um, from what people tell me, a lot of people, I guess, you know, love love the page and love what I do. One thing about Hooked LV is that I always tell people is that Hooked LV is a, um, I'm able to, you know, it connects people. connects Food connects the world, you know. And I, that's something that I really like doing. So that's pretty cool opportunities that have come with it, you know. Graham Stephan's one example for sure. Um, here's one topic we never talk about. Um, can you cook? Can I cook? Yes. I yeah. love cooking, man. Really? Yeah, I love cooking. Shit. Like I, this I, should I, be a whole new thing. Dude, I, I love Who cooking. cooking at home. Yeah. Let me know if you guys want to see that. Yeah, but, fuck yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I, Dude, all the brand deals that you would get. And I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm a chef. So what would you cook? Say we come over. I don't know, man. I would I'd make you guys something. I don't really. I would have to think about it. That's okay. the thing. I would right. want to make something super cool. But you know, going to restaurants, you know, being in this, you know, for for you know, almost four years now. You know, I go to so many restaurants. I see how they plate stuff and stuff like partage. Uh, so I see how they plate stuff, and you know, it looks so nice and pretty. So whenever I cook for myself at home. I try to make it look like if I'm, you know, being served at a restaurant. So, you know, I had a little garnish here and there, you know, make it look nice, even though I'm just going to eat it myself and no one's watching. Um, but yeah, I, I, do, I do like cooking. I, I eat simple stuff at home, though. So I bought a smoker See, uh, since I recently got, got my home. I, uh, I bought a smoker and it's, it's made things so much easier. Um, so in the smoker all you have to do is you know let's say whatever type of meat and protein you have let's say chicken for example now you just pop it in this and it's, it has wi-fi too in the smoker it's pretty cool so you pop the chicken in there and then you put you you on your phone you're able to set the you put a the thermometer in right the probe right. uh you're, you're able to set the temperature you want wanted to come to you got to adjust the temperature of the of the of the kind of smoker and it's yeah that's it but and then it cooks it by itself. Let's say I'm not home. I can kind of keep it warm if I want to. So it's kind of helped a lot. But um, yeah, I do, I do like cooking for sure. It's fun. I like nice. kind of creating stuff. Well, yeah, that'd be amazing content, dude. You should fucking do that. Maybe. Maybe in my kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all, the cooks are making the most money. I got to ask Susie. Yeah. The, I think the cooks are making the most money right now. Yeah. Um, Susie, Happy Butters, Tummy 702. Happy Tummy 702. Amazing cooking content. Yeah, dude. Her. Yeah. From what I've heard, her 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 deals are insane. I want to do a quick podcast with her on the whole Britney thing that happened with her. Britney what Spears Britney? Re reposted, reposted her fucking cake crazy. video wow. just randomly. She, like she never posts food. And, Britney uh, Spears. Yeah. 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 She wow. got like five k in like three minutes. That's uh, insane. From that, Britney yeah. Spears. That's huge. So random. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was special about the cake though? Well, it's just a killer video of. 
Yeah. It was just like yeah. a random cake, like regular yeah, cake. Yeah, one of her, one of. But was it like a mochi cake or something crazy or? I think it was a crepe cake, right? Crepe cake. Rainbow. Crepe. Oh, rainbow crepe. Okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Dude, rainbow crepe cakes are so good. <laughs> You've had one before, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite type of cake for sure. Crepe cakes. <laughs> We're gonna go a little deeper with this one. Would it be possible to share maybe an oh shit moment where something at that time felt terrible, but actually worked out to be an amazing life event? Like for example, for me, um, right when lockdown started, I lost like eight clients in one day and I felt like the world was over. And it turned out to be the best thing that ever fucking happened to me. I'm losing all those clients. You know what's crazy? Yeah. That would probably be my exact same answer, too, because I think COVID is a horrible thing. Yeah. You know, a lot of people got affected by it. A lot of people passed away. A lot of people, you know, it's a, it's a very sensitive topic. Um, but it was also a blessing for other people. And it's so crazy how it works, you know. It's so crazy how the world works. Who would not who, who would have expected a, a pandemic to happen, you know, in, in Still feels like a dream. Yeah, like, dude, I can't believe we all lived through it. And and everybody I everybody I've spoken to had big plans for 2020. <laughs> I was supposed to go to Japan for two weeks. That's right. Yeah. For Han- Hanami. I was supposed to go blossoms. see my grandparents in Mexico for. I think it was. I forgot how many days it was. My parents were gonna go for longer, and I was only going gonna go for a few days because obviously I have things that I had to take care of. Yeah. I was supposed to go do all that. I was supposed to do. I want to do. I wanted to go to Japan for two weeks. Yep. I was gonna go to Okinawa. Um, and it just it kind of it sucked, you know. Um, but it was also a blessing because yeah, we we did I did lose a lot of clients, but it made in this industry it made a lot of restaurant owners realize that social media is important because everybody would message us and say, hey, can you shout out that we can you post that we're doing drive through? Can you post that we're doing takeout? Can you post that we're doing delivery? Can you post that we're doing this? And and some of those restaurant owners are restaurant are owners that would ignore my messages would ignore my messages, would never, ever believe in social media, right? True. But it made some of them clients, or it made some of them realize, like, hey, these people are actually helping. You know, social media is, is was important. Yeah. And it's it's a learning lesson for some, and it's a blessing for others, for sure. So I would say that's kind of, like, one thing for me. I would probably say the exact same thing you said, the same answer. It's amazing how many people, how many guests we've had here on the show th- that are products of lockdown. Yeah. And perhaps they wouldn't even be where they are now in the social media world without it. Was my Amano post during lockdown? Yeah. It was? End of the summer. End of summer, fall. 2020, right? The August 2020. Yeah, it was towards the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, it's so crazy. Uh, I, I would say, uh, I would say TikTok, one, changed my life, and two, COVID. Also, even though I had, I had COVID, I got COVID twice. Are yeah. we allowed to say COVID? We're allowed to say COVID. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I got it twice. A different C word is not allowed. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got it. I got it twice. And, uh, and it, it wasn't too bad. It's very, very, um, you know, mild symptoms and stuff. But um, yeah, yeah I, remember the fir- crazy. I remember the first time you had it because it was the, my first day out of COVID. Oh, yeah. We, we went to Partage. Dude, that's such a crazy that story. Day. Terrible. That's such a crazy story. Yeah. And you know, it, it, what's so crazy is that within 24 hours, I, I felt symptoms. Yeah. But it's crazy. But when I was at Partage, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm like, I'm fine. But then the next day, I was like, man, I got to text Phil, you know, bro. I feel something. <laughs> 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 no, but it was it was bad the first day. Yeah, I, I had a really bad headache. Tylenol cured it. Right. Yeah, literally Tylenol made me just... Yeah, the vaccine didn't Yeah, after that, I was just stuck in my room for two weeks. <laughs> And I couldn't do anything. That's that, honestly that was the worst part for me. Yeah, staying stuck in yeah, in, a, in, a, in a in a square for for two weeks it was like torture almost. Yeah, I agree. Because I I'm a type of person who likes to move around, likes to do things, go out and, um. But now I'm appreciating kind of staying home now. Kind of learn to appreciate that now that I have my own home. By choice. <laughs> yeah, by home. choice. Yeah. yeah. So I I kind of appreciate that more. Kind of I, I understand why people sometimes don't want to go out on weekends and just want to chill at home because it's it's relaxing honestly. Like, yeah. I, like I mentioned earlier, being with my dogs is, like, the best thing I could do. Just, honestly, it's so peaceful. No danger around, no nothing. It's just, honestly, just super chill. <laughs> what kind of content does Hooked LV consume? It's probably not food content. Dude, I don't really con- I don't really consume too much content anymore. No? Yeah, I used to, like, crazy before. Um, 
Is uh, that just because you just want to get away from it as your break to not deal with it? To be it? honest, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, work consists of being on my phone. And I'm pretty sure this is the same for a lot of people in this industry is that you're just on your phone so much that sometimes I think about it really hard and I'm like, dude, I need to get off my phone. Like I need to, sometimes it just stressed me out, you know, because uh, I, I just want some time away from it. It's not that it's bad. I know sometimes it, it affects people pretty bad. There's, so, there's some some influencers that I've seen that comments and certain stuff affects them and they make a video reaction to it and stuff like that. But I don't, I, none of that stuff really affects me. Well, I don't really get too many bad comments, but I've seen some pretty, maybe a few in the past four years that are pretty bad, right? But um, but I don't really s let stuff like that affect me. Uh, for me, it's more just like, I just don't want to have my phone in my hand. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of just want to do something else. So, yeah. Yeah, a guideline for me is it, once it passes 100 comments, I just stop reading. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh wow! I, I try to I try to go through most of my comments. Uh, I'm getting better. I so I'm really bad at responding to comments. So I post and never mm. go back to them. <laughs> yeah, so I post and so I recently have been getting better at uh trying to respond to every comment just to help the algorithm out a little bit on on every platform. So I've I've been, I've been working on that for sure. That's good. But um, as far as um, yeah, just taking some time away from it is really important for sure. Yeah. Um, you spent a long time in Las Vegas. What's one old restaurant you'd uh, bring back? Dude, one old restaurant that I bring back. Maybe something your family. You know, you know what's interesting? Growing up, my parents would only cook at home. My parents were against. Never go out. My parents were against eating out. Okay. So the only times my parents would the, the only time my parents would eat out is if it's a good deal, if it's a buffet. <laughs> like, have you guys ever been to Buffet of Asia? Yeah, yeah, a long Dude, time ago. Dude, that's my. I was my parents' spot. Hey, Eastside <laughs> kids are gonna. Eastside kids are gonna know this, man. <laughs> Eastside kids are gonna know that this was the spot. Right. Yeah, dude, my parents were against it. My parents were always so the way I was raised. My parents were like, eat at home, eat at home, eat at home, save money, save money, save money, or or don't spend money, don't spend, don't spend money, don't spend money, don't spend money. So for me, growing up, it was always just, just eating food at home. <laughs> so honestly, it's just if I could bring something back, is living back with my mom and having her cook food for me, because that's something that I miss for sure. Right. Um, and that's what eventually made you a foodie. Yeah, was all those, all those great meals. Yeah, all that time and ago. and it wasn't until uh, like my high school years where, you know, I got introduced to vehicles and I can go out and go wherever I want. Right. So for me, growing up, it, I don't really have too many a special connection to a restaurant. I know other people might, but I never really had that. Is Buffet at Asia still around? Is it Buffet, buffet Asia? Buffet Asia is still around and okay. you would never want to go in there. I remember, my, <laughs> you don't I remember go in there. Like 12 years ago and I said if I were homeless I would have saved up and this you is what I would have gone. Oh, me? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I, I wrote a Yelp review like 12 years ago. What was it? I said if I were sa if I were homeless I would save up all fucking day me too. to eat at Buffet Asia. Yeah. Yeah. Broke man's heaven. yeah. You've never been broke if you've never been there. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we uh, so the Buffet at Asia uh, we would go to is the one that's like right on Right across like a church. Right. I don't, I don't know if you know the. I don't know the cross exactly. Like know. Tropicana and something, right? Okay. But yeah, that's the one we would go to. You know, and and some. Oh, you know what I would bring back? Here's a good one. So, uh, Sam's Town used to have um, a, a a crab leg buffet. Like I don't know what it was. It was like a Tuesday or Friday or something like mm -hmm. that. So they would just bring out a bucket of crab legs. For like, I don't even know. My parents would pay, obviously. I was young. Right. But right. obviously, that doesn't exist anymore. If I could bring that back, I would because okay. I love crab legs. Crab legs. Crab, crab legs buffet. are something I can eat. It's yeah. tough to do now. Dude, really it, buffets do. don't exist really anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's the crazy. Palms Lobster Buffet on Wednesdays is like, what, 85 bucks? Palms Lobster Buffet. Yeah. Every Wednesday, they do a, a lobster buffet, $85 per person. And the line, it opens at 2 p.m. Line starts at like 10 a.m. Do you prefer lobster or crab legs? King crab legs. King crab legs, right? Yeah. Dude, I don't really like lobster too much. I know I know it's so expensive and people have an obsession over it. You know, people brag about it, but I, I don't really know what's so special about lobster. It's I feel like it's so dry. I feel like a, a crab leg is just so juicy, you know? Uh, that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> maybe the way it's prepared too. But yeah, yeah, I get it. I think most people are team crab over team lobster. Yeah, maybe I haven't had too many good lobsters. Uh, Golden steer. You, you, yeah. The has some Western. pretty good lobsters, yeah. yeah. But I, I would still choose the crab legs for sure. But if, it, if it's given to me, I'll eat it for sure. You know, right? I don't right. hate it. <laughs> Same playing. thing with shrimp. Same thing with shrimp. Shrimp? Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a shrimp guy. You're not a shrimp guy at all. No, I know people go crazy over shrimp. Yeah. 
Okay. People have obsessions over shrimps and lobsters and stuff like it's like it's caviar almost, but like I'd rather I'll just eat. crab legs are like my favorite seafood for sure. Okay. Crab legs. Good to know. And then uh, finally, I'm planning a plus one podcast featuring significant others down the road. Um, what does Sandy, your girlfriend, think of how this whole journey has been for you since she's seen it from day from one? From the bottom, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy because uh, she she's seen all this happen from, from nothing, right? From her driving me. So I didn't have a car uh, at some point, and she would drive me to... Uh, to different spots, she would pick me up from UNLV when I was still at UNLV, but I dropped out. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty cool story that people don't know too. I dropped out of UNLV to kind of like continue, you know, do this. Yeah. Um. But uh, sorry, I lost my train. The tequila's hitting me a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Tequila's, <laughs> and the tequila's kind of hit. Oh, they took it away. Oh no, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> they, they took it away. They t- I thought they took it away for a second. <laughs> Uh, no, but yeah, she she helped me out a lot uh, when I was kind of starting. And f- what what she tells me from you know everything I've been doing is that I've I've inspired her and I've I've made her realize that and uh, that there's more to life than just going to school and having a job. Yeah, there's more to life than just working a nine to five and going to you know getting a career at university or college or whatever, right? And that's that's one thing she's she's told me. That, that there's more to life than, than just doing that. And, I, and I've been, I, I try to inspire other young people around me, you know, whenever I have the opportunity. Some people don't like it, though. It's crazy. Some people are, so, there's this, like, quote, like, you can't talk about goals and stuff like that around the wrong people because they're just going to think you're bragging. True. And that's the same thing I've experienced before. Um, but the people that get it, get it. And the people that are, are have, have big goals and mindsets in life are, are going to understand but there's so much more you can do with life, honestly, than just getting a job. 100%. Crazy. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's what I love about this podcast is, I mean, constantly talking to people doing it their own way. Right. Who inspire me personally. And uh, and it's just awesome to see what you've done so far, and, and I can't wait to see, you know, what's to come. Thank you. And, and same thing with my family, too. Yeah. So, like coming from a Hispanic family, right? Um, is everything is just so traditional, you know? You're the best kid in the family if, if you go to school and you got a career, you know? But you don't need that. It, like, we, we live, in the, we live in, the, in a world nowadays where you don't need that to, to be successful. You don't need that to become somebody. Um, it's just the same thing with family. I've had the same experiences with, with family of, of, you know, doubt and, and, sure. and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, dude, it's, it's crazy. It's a blessing for sure, and uh, and I'm happy. And any, anybody that's watching this, if 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 you, dude, there's there's so much more you can do than just getting a job. And you don't, and you could be any age. Honestly, I'm I'm trying to help one of my girlfriend's cousins. Right, uh, he's 16, but this guy looks like his, he has a body of like a 27, like a 25 year old. He's crazy, you know. I'm like, dude, you can start a personal brand right now, and you could do something with it. And I'm not saying everybody has to have a nice body, because obviously I don't, but you can you can make any type of brand on social media nowadays. TikTok, TikTok is so crazy what you could do, you know. So anybody anybody that's out there watching, just pick up your phone and just try to do something, anything, because school is not for everybody. But I only say school is good if you don't have anything to do. So the only reason why I was at UNLV is because I I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah, like and a lot w- of people your age. Yeah, yeah. And, and and when I realized that. It just wasn't for me, and I wanted to for sure be consistent in what I wanted to do. Um, that's when you know I left school and started doing it. But school is good if you don't know what you want to do. It keeps you busy, keeps your brain moving. But that's what I have to say. <laughs> there you go. Well, this has been awesome. I'm glad you we finally did this second time around. And yeah, if you want to hear about more about Damien's origin story, I would highly suggest going back to the first episode. It's a great time capsule of what was going on with you back then and and to see you then to now is just phenomenal yeah we did the podcast on the laptop (laughs) on a laptop yeah during covid it was crazy yeah Yeah. but uh anything else you want to plug i just just follow uh follow what what i have going on um at hooked ov on every platform you know i have some things that are uh going on that are going to be pretty fun for 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 people to see and enjoy but obviously still a lot of the what, what people obviously want to see right now, which is the food content. 
Um, yeah, not anything else I want to plug. Not really. Eat with love always. Eat with love always on Instagram. Check it out. It's a new burger concept that we're going to open up um, soon. Yep. And it's going to be something cool for the city. We're honestly we're, we're doing it more for for the for the Vegas culture and for the city, giving something, giving the people something new to to go to and try. And it's going to be a cool vibe in there. I bet. I bet. Yeah, it's not going to be your your national chain brand, which I think eventually one day national brands are. I feel like aren't going to really do that well anymore. I feel like people love going to local spots that are cool, unique. You know, based on what everybody everybody that follows me and stuff, what people send me messages, they'd rather go to a, a cool, unique spot than a national brand. But, um, yeah, you would love always soon. Check it out. All right. <laughs> Pretty much it. Awesome. Damien, thanks for being here. Till next week. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to the Las Vegasville podcast. For more information about me and where I've been dining recently, check out my IG and TikTok at Las Vegas Phil. Feel free to text or leave me a voicemail about anything you want, 702-551-4445. Stay tuned as a new episode of the show debuts every Monday morning.